Hey everyone, Dr. Waters here once again for Game Design Wit and continuing our book review series. Today we're going to look at The Art of Computer Game Design by the only one, Chris Crawford. This book is a motherfucker. It completely blew my fucking mind when I read it. It was actually one of the first computer game design books that I read. Um, and right on the first few pages, one of the things that surprised me was like, wow, this guy has a lot of insight into a few areas of game design. And when I looked at it, I was like, okay, when was this book published? And it was 1984, right? And so I was like, how the heck did this guy have so much insight into what makes games and game design and avoiding classical tropes such as, you know, obsession of graphical realism and all that kind of stuff. I was just blown away at the fact that, that this guy just back then just knew all that stuff. And Chris Crawford, he was like one of the big design daddies at the Atari during the Atari golden days. And uh, as he put in another book, he was Mr. Atari at one point. Uh, but it was, a, I was surprised at how much fun this book is to read. Most of the stuff that Chris Crawford writes is always entertaining to, to read. But um, it's also, like as you can tell, it almost feels like an oversized magazine, right? So you can easily blast through this in a, in a day. And I highly recommend you take a look at it because to me what was the most interesting thing about this book was displaying how an individual way back then was able to have so much insight into game design. Which will let me think, okay, how does, did this even occur? Right? How was this person so ahead of the curve uh, when it comes to game design back then? And when you read the book, you kind of sort of see that Chris's approach was like, you need to constantly be taking a step back and asking yourself, what are you experiencing and what are you enjoying as you're playing, as you're designing a game? If you just try to feel how you feel as you're playing a game, that will sort of answers all tons of questions and so on and so forth. But that aside, one of the things that was really blown away also by this book, you know, it was one of the few books that put it in a really eloquent way, it was sort of describing games as a system. And Chris Crawford kind of became famous after, like, as coining the term games as a system. And he goes on to highlight about the conflict nature of games and where players are through, uh, where players are placed in that and so on and so forth. But right at the beginning, he puts it, in a very eloquent way where he's like in a game the designer creates not the experience itself but the conditions and rules under which the audience will create its own individualized experience i love that sentence because that just describes game design and the discrepancy that games have when it comes to other means other mediums like books or novels or music in, in it just completely call, uh, condenses all of that right you're not thinking about the experience you want the user to have you're thinking about the conditions the rules and out of th those out of that realm of probability arises experiences that it are unique to only that user right even if the user is doing the exact same set of course of actions other users are doing because it's that user who's making those decisions was making uh, those choices. It becomes an experience that only that user understands and only that user possesses. And it becomes their experience, right? And it's about the user, not necessarily what you as a designer trying to construct around that. You gotta focus on what the player experiences. And he just begins the book with that and then just continues to blast off various other tidbits and so on and so forth. Now, yes, some parts of this book haven't aged well over time particularly the part of taxonomy because you know i think back then he was trying to say okay we have these atari games and some computer games how do you define them so he came up with some sort of definition and so on and so forth. but even him in the in the book was highlighting hey i know this is going to change but at least i think he was highlighting how important it is for you to discern games on through their genres through their the, the things you do in the game for their verbs and actually talk a little bit more about that in one of my videos, the prison of gaming terms. He, you, you need to have the capacity to not only uh, learn about games taxonomy, but create your own, right? And he sort of highlight talks at a high level about this in this book. And he talks about, you know, uh, some basics of game design, such as uh, triangularity when it comes to balancing the game, and a very simple question, which I think is it's 
difficult to answer, which is why do people have fun playing a game like Tetris or Pac-Man when they know they're going to lose? Like, right from the get-go, you know you're going to lose Tetris or Pac-Man. The game was designed with that in mind, right? And yet it's still fun. People enjoy it. Like, why is... And he calls it the illusion of winning, right? And he goes on to explain this at a high level. Um, he talks about keeping UI clean, etc. So it's interesting being able to read uh, a book like this from from a thousand billion years ago, which was 1984, uh, in computer terms, and be able to understand how people approach the problem back then. I mean, <laughs> in one of the last chapters, he actually has to talk about what he thinks the future of computer games is going to be like is our game computer games still going to be around you know people were still asking themselves that question back then you know is it a fad or a fixture uh, as he puts it uh, and clearly it wasn't the case uh but it's interesting understanding that zeitgeist but also understanding and being able to reflect what still is eternal about games and still is tr holds up to scrutiny right and being able to a lot of folks reference Chris Crawford and I think this was one of the first books that he kept published. He published many others. Uh, I'll talk about those later on. But I highly recommend you take a look at this guy because it's 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 reading Chris Crawford to me it's always fun. And he always is able to get to the point of what makes it a game fun and entertaining. So that's the review. Uh, if you guys have any other thing you would like me to review or revise, be it a game or it doesn't or anything else uh, when it comes to games. Um, we don't need to just stick with uh, computer game books. Um, I also have been looking at a lot of the comments and yes, some of the folks are talking about that. They'd like me to uh, go back to my previous styles. I'd love to, but it just takes way too much time to produce that content. Um, I'm, f I'm trying to think of terms of either finding some someone to help me produce that content and potentially be willing to share revenue with with the, the channel I'm not generating anything but I'm just thinking out loud like options that I can do because I do enjoy making those videos it's just that uh, being able to produce them uh, logistically right now is something that I can't do so if you know anyone that's interesting interested in partaking in this endeavor and potentially helping me out produce that I'll be more than glad to you know give them references and give them credit uh, as we make those contents. Uh, feel free to let me know, because like what I would like, to, I'd love to just write the script. Like not even the, like I, I would even delegate the voiceover. <laughs> uh, I, I like talking about it, I like thinking about it, and if this allows me to talk about more stuff faster, why not, you know? But anyway, thanks for watching yet another video of mine. Like and subscribe and share and retweet and put on Google Plus. So you and your five G plus friends can see. Uh, all right. And let me know what other book you'd like to meet me to revise or game as well below. I already said that, but I'm saying it again. I, I, I actually really like when people put comments now. It's always fun to engage and interact with the community, including you, person that's going to write first on the comments down below. I enjoy when you do that as well. We all do that one time. I think it's a rite of passage when we turn 12. <laughs> all right. Take care, guys.